Today we have a very interesting topic, the hot standby PLC concepts, generation, and hardware testing. Stay tuned. The first question, what is hot standby PLC? Simply two PLC, 100% identical and ready to control your system or plant where one is taking the lead and the other one is watching, waiting to support his partner at any sort of failure. So the second question should be how? Simply the two PLCs are connected through HSBY link or the hot standby link to keep them synchronized with the latest update in each and every scan cycle. So one is reaching the IOs and controlling your blunt, and the other one is reaching the remote IOs communication head only, waiting the signal to take over. So the question is, what are these signals? There are two types of signals, simply hardware and software. The first one, the hardware failure. DLC or communication card, if any. Sometimes we use communication modules or switches on the master rack. So the failure of one of these cards will be identified and trigger the changeover between the master and standby. The second one, communication failure. Primary PLC is not reaching all remote IOS head or distributed IOS communication head. At the same time, the standby is still having connection at least with one RIO head. And the easiest one, CPU power off. The second type is software failure. Stop command to the primary PLC, directly will issue the changeover. Uh, the second one, changeover command from the software, and this normally for maintenance verification and to make sure your system is ready. And the last one, PLC entering blocking condition, which will lead to CPU halt. And if you are Interested, I can show you some codes which will do this changeover. The question, what are the measures that make system called hot standby? The measure here is changeover between the primary and the secondary or the standby controller in few milliseconds without any IO blink, which is commonly called bumpless transfer. And this is exactly what we are going to test by the end of this video. And from this point, I think you would be guessing that there is other type of redundancy like cold or warm redundancy. And the measure here is the speed of the changeover. As we mentioned in the intro, we'll be discussing the generations. Why do we want to discuss the generations? Is it waste of time? The answer is simply no. We have to understand where we reach with the technologies. And the main point here is some leading PLC manufacturer like Rockwell didn't reach or implement the new concept. So the question again, what is old and what's new? The old generation, like what you see here with our Schneider Quantum, and the same is implemented to S7400, which is the main reason behind the cost impact of HSBY or the hot standby system. You need several parts and components for this implementation, and mainly three major parts. A processor or the main processor, which is processing uh, the application, and co-processor for the role of HSBY data update between the master and the standby, and, and communication card to connect with the network. So here with the quantum, we have the CRB head, which is com controlling the RIOs or the remote IO, and it is necessary as the minimum configuration of the hot standby. And as we said earlier, in other configuration, we have something called redundant module or whatever. But again, at the end, this is the old concept. And believe me, there is a hassle of firmware upgrade when, once you mix old and new cards. So the good question is, what is the new implementation? Simply one CPU processor having everything built into its core, like the Schneider M580. Sh 
Schneider newest flagship controller, which is announced as the first e-bag with Ethernet backplane, and it is relying on dual core processor from ST Microelectronics, the biggest silicon manufacturer in Europe, I would say the very well-known company with a headquarter in Switzerland. The processor itself is capable of handling HSPY through a dedicated one gigabyte per second port. For, it is SFE port, by the way. It, so it is accepting the fiber transceiver like this one. Or standard RJ45 and two dedicated boards uh, capable of remote IOS communication in ring topology, adding to this one more service port here and one USB port. M580 is capable of handling a speed of 100 Mbps end-to-end -end, uh, in the network. So this announcement together with Ethernet backlane, ah, I can show you this one here. Where is that one? As you see here, one slot is the X bus and the other one is Ethernet bus. Just think about it for a second. The original serial bus plus the Ethernet new bus on the same rack, which gave us a new level of transparency. So you can easily integrate network switches and access your equipment from anywhere in the network. This announcement of this controller five years back as the only solution with transparency Ethernet and cybersecurity built onto one CPU core. And this transparency is a key for digital transformation and the IoT application. Myself installed the first one in the region and 20 plus sets of this controller and I can 100% recommend them as one CPU is definitely cost very less compared to the old configuration what we see in the Quantum and S7400. And again, Brockwell as well. And this is one of my main reasons of using Schneider hardware in the last few years. If you are new with the PLCs, maybe you can't feel what I said, but if you work with those old series, you would probably know why we call this as innovation. Just feel you can go with the switches built on the PLC rack, and you can go with ring topologies directly from the PLC rack through the starters and all the PLCs in your network. This all implementation with high availabilities and flexibilities. I, I think it sounds weird, but anyway, hopefully you, you'll get the point. And just uh, to give you some brief about PLC processors, as I'm receiving questions on this subject, I think each and every one of you uh, is familiar with the latest or heard about ARM architecture and RISC and CISC. After Apple announced in the WWDC 2020, the roadmap with their own silicon away from Intel in their Mac lineup with ARM based processor like the A12 Bionic, which is the first seven nanometer processor in the market. Schneider is not having the, their own silicon division as we mentioned. And it is relying on ST Microelectronics, which is a very well-known company in this field. And this M580 is using the customizable processor family called uh, SPEAR, which is Structure Processor Enhanced Architecture. Uh, really, myself, I don't know what does this means, but it is based on ARM uh, core architecture and most of the PLCs in the market are using the same ARM RISC architecture for the efficiency and heat management. Schneider M340 was utilizing the microprocessor from Atmel and we saw the S7300 using the tri-core from Infineon, which is a company owned by Siemens at the very early stage. And then we saw the S7 1200 and 1500 using chipset from Siemens or with Siemens logo. And I can confirm if Siemens is having a silicon uh, division or silicon is or in the silicon industry or just rebranding the processor. 
And if you give me two minutes more, I just want to clear some things here. Schneider pushed the level of the competition and they came first with the new generation through their new lineup of controllers, as you see them in 580. Then Siemens came after with their new S7 1500 R&H redundant systems. And we probably would have one separate uh, video about these uh, topologies. And up to this moment, Rockwell is behind and didn't show up. As you see here, this is the proposal work of Rockwell, which is responsible for the selection and making the proposals. Once we select the redundant systems, this will be the configuration through all the old controllers, 5570 control logics. And this is the normal practice. You see new series like the 50, 5580, and then after some years or sometimes, you have the redundant offer. If you remember, Siemens pushed the new 1500 series in 2012, and then the new TIA portal software but we waited for a long time with the Semantic Manager for implementing the HSBY with the S7400 and also for the BCS7 till the release of TIA Portal version 15.1 and the new S7 1500 RNH controllers, which was end of uh, 2018, which is commercialized last year. The previous video, we talked about Comdex PLCs and Siemens took the lead with S7-1200 and after years, Schneider came with the Machine Expert series and for us as a users, we are going whatever it suits, our projects and budget. And normally when someone asked me about recommending PLC manufacturer, I'm always saying, select one of the three and you'll never go wrong. Schneider was shining star at the beginning and stay low for a quite long time. Then Rockwell was shining star, especially in the US. Then Siemens it changed the market completely with a unique total integrated automation concept, the TIA. And nowadays you can achieve your target or your project with any one of them. And the preference is depending on your local area. Some they have better service prices from Siemens and the others are having better from Schneider and others from Rockwell. This all talk from my perspective, as I have been in the water treatment since 13 years, maybe things are different if you are in other sort of business like factory automation, food and beverage, pharmaceuticals. Surely there are some offers here and there which have better price to feature ratios. But having better service and support will give a leverage for our business. I think I have to give example here. Here in Saudi, Siemens is having much faster delivery schedule. And I remember uh, in one project, I was having 100 pieces of S7-1200 and 80 pieces of 9-inch comfort panels and two racks of S7-1500. And Siemens delivered 100% of the parts in nine days. On the other hand, Snyder is having much better prices and Rockwell here start improving after changing the distributor. They had issues in, in, in the past with their commitments for the deliveries as they are running through distributor, not Rockwell directly, same as Phoenix and other companies. Let us go back to the topic, but I feel I have to clear those things as I'm always receiving the question on the same subject. The good question, why do they call it hardware redundancy? Is there any other sort of redundancy or implementation? The answer is yes. Siemens offer software redundancy in the previous era through the S7300, but it is not hot standby and it is customizable to the part of the application. And myself, I wasn't happy with this implementation, but we were considering it cost-effective redundancy. I would leave a link below for the real pause videos if you are interested to go through this configuration. S7300 is reaching the 
end of service this year, 2020, I remember one funny story here. One time I visited oil and gas field and they told me that we have hot standby redundant BLCs. And once I opened the panel, I found two small compact Wiro BLCs. And the application or the designer, what he, he has done is just took the run status to a relay. So once this BLC is off, the relay will trigger the power supply to the other one. And I can call it cold redundancy, but it is something for me, it's, it was something weird. I, I haven't seen this implementation before, but we can call it redundancy. I should stop telling stories, but I have to clarify what we mean by hot standby. It is the major factor here is the speed. If you cannot make the bumpless transfer or achieve no IO blink, and there is something we'll discuss in further videos or next videos about the whole time between further details in this subject, we will come later to this point. The final question here, what will happen to the connected devices or system if this changeover happened? The answer is simply nothing. As there is automatic procedure of swabbing the IPs, so PLC, consider if PLC A is having the IP of 192.168.1.100 and PLC B is having 192.168.1.101 and normally uh, the, the main PLC will take the IP and the secondary or the standby will take the same IP plus one. And you cannot change this configuration in most of the hot standby system I have ever seen. So once BLC B is going online as a primary, the IP will be swapped automatically and the PLC B will take over with the IP 100 that's why nothing will happen or being affected. And no need to write a code on the SCADA or HMIs to change the connection settings as in some other implementations. By mistake, I have deleted the hardware test. Just give me a few hours. I will do the hardware test videos again and upload it in the next video directly. Just a few hours. I'm sorry for this discrepancies. Have a good night.